Today, we're going to dive into eight surprising statistics that every Etsy beginner needs to know if you're starting out a shop. By the end of this video, you have a way better idea of how the Etsy platform works, different insights you get from it, and how to make better decision making as you embark on this Etsy seller journey. And I can't wait to share these stats with you. You're going to be very surprised and informed at the same time so that you'll have better success growing your shop. So let's get into it. All right, so number one, Etsy has 86.3 million active buyers, while there's only 7.5 million active sellers as of 2021. So the ratio between sellers and buyers is every one seller there is, there's 12 buyers. And so why should you know this? So this can help you have a better understanding in terms of how many buyers are actually shopping on Etsy, which is crazy how many people do versus how many people are actually selling on. And if you think about the 7.5 million active sellers that are on this platform, how many of them are actually executing correctly, right? So if you can do better than most sellers out there, then most of the time you're going to be in the one percenters. Every one of my shops in my categories, it's been considered in one percent just because of the different strategies and tactics that I execute on. And it's something that I talk a lot about throughout my channel. So if you want to learn more about that, make sure you're subscribed to it. And if you are, then perfect, you're in the right place. You're going to get a lot of different value from this. So number two, 50% of buyers search directly on Etsy.com when they're looking to buy products. So if you know that around 50% of people are actually searching directly on the Etsy platform, then it makes you think about how you should market your shop and listing. Should you be focusing your efforts on social marketing or do you just focus on SEO titles and tags within your shop and creating the best product listings, images, best descriptions, all focusing towards the demographic, the audience on the platform itself, right? So for me, it's always going to be focusing on the Etsy platform. If half of them are already searching on there, then that's enough for me to actually make a pretty good living <laughs> from just targeting those audience. And over time, you can focus on the other 50% on the web, on social media, but for now, I personally rather do the other way just because if people are searching it, they're already looking for the product. So that first one is already done. As long as you can meet their needs, create a product that's exactly what they're looking for, the most likely you will get that sale. Whereas if you're promoting externally, first you have to convince them that they need the product, that they want this, then they have to go buy from you. I'd rather focus on the ones that are already searching for that product and fulfilling their needs through that. So number three, 86% of Etsy buyers are females. So this is something to think about when you're approaching a different category or branding styles. Do you want to go for the majority buyers audience, which are females or you want to create a product for the underserved category, which are males, right? So something to think about, I'm not saying that you have to go for the female just because that's the main audience, because if you go that way, there's going to be a lot more sellers approaching that. But for me, from my experience, I always like to create products that are more unisex, something that works for both, because a lot of mine are in the home decor categories or for niches that needs consent from both sides. So for example, if I was selling wall art, most of the time, if I'm selling it, if a female catches their eye from it, they will need to get consent or they need to get that okay from the partner to make sure that they both like it if it's an interior product, right? So I don't like to go too one-sided on for targeting females or one-sided towards males. I like to go in the middle, but that's personally what I like to do for my shops in terms of how I brand it, in terms of how I do my marketing. So a couple of things to think about once you figure out what your demographic is, whether it's females, males, the different age groups, age ranges, now you want to see how you can brand it differently, right? Think about your font choice, think about the mock-ups, the lifestyle images, how should you stylize these shots, right? Considering what your demographic likes. If you're doing social media marketing, what are some different social platforms that they'll be on for you to market it correctly for that audience? So something to think about when you're doing demographic targeting. So number four, 63.8% of buyers are shopping directly on the mobile app. So knowing that majority of people are shopping from the mobile app, that kind of changes how you approach your listings, how you approach your images, especially your banners, your about page, anything that shows visuals, you want to know that it is optimized for the small phone screen. You don't want to create things that don't show the product that much because I have to really zoom in to see it. And if you're having text your images, make sure it's large enough for an average person to read it. And also when it comes down to text, you don't want to create an essay in your descriptions. And most of the time you want to create bullet points. So people don't have to scroll super long to get to the point of it, right? Make sure everything's condensed, concise, so that it's optimized for your phones. So something I always recommend is once you open up a shop, you want to look through it on your mobile phone, search up your shop and see how for the most time I always see things that I can improve on as I'm scrolling through that because the experience is different looking at from your computer versus on your phone. So something I definitely recommend is to check on both sides, make sure it looks good on the desktop, but also on your mobile phone. So number five, just last month, Etsy received over 500 million visits with an average session duration of 13 minutes and 44 seconds across 4.5 page visits. So if you think about it this way, this is a long time for an average person to search on Etsy. Just to put things in perspective, if you think about an average 
average e-commerce business, an average website, the average duration is only three minutes and 36 seconds. So that's a huge difference. 13 minutes versus three minutes. So this kind of gives you a couple insights. Number one is the buyers on Etsy are serious buyers, right? They're there, they're, like I mentioned earlier, they're already searching for things, they know what they want and you just need to find the right one and they'll to execute it and make that purchase. Number two, these are buyers that like to know more behind the scenes, they like to click through the listings and know exactly what other things you're selling. Maybe check out your about page, your profile and really get to know the seller a bit more. After knowing that, you want to make sure that everything is optimized, not just the product listing itself. And I know a lot of different shop owners find success is just building different listings in all types of categories and just focusing on that. But for me, I like to create a whole experience, right? For my shops, I like to be very niche, very specialized. So when the buyer sees it, when they're clicking on a product and then click on my shop, they know exactly that this is what I do, right? I'm authority in the space. These products is what I specialize compared to other people who do general shops, right? So something to think about is how you can optimize everything about your shop to have the same messaging and same brand values so that you can gain trust from the buyers and help ultimately help them convert better from your shop compared to other sellers. So number six is repeat buyers are responsible for 81% of all purchases. And this is really huge because it shows you that people who buy from Etsy are most likely going to go back on Etsy to purchase more items, whether it's 81% off from your shop, which I don't think that's the case. I think it means in general as an Etsy buyer, but it really shows the loyalty as someone that likes to shop on Etsy, having a good experience and repeating that process. And over time, which makes Etsy a platform that's good to invest in just because you know that the active buyers are increasing year by year. It's based on the stats on repeated buyers. So a couple actionable tips is number one, which is having good customer service. I know everyone talks about having good customer service. It is a super important aspect of it. If you want to continue to grow and scale your business, having more repeated customers. If they like what you do, you got good products from you, they're gonna come back to you or better yet, gonna tell their friends about you as well. So number two, offer discounts and incentives for your repeated buyers, right? You can do post purchase messages, you can have these things automated, but make sure you know you treat them right. You know, you're giving them what they deserve for someone that's buying from you. You really appreciate that. You want to thank them and in return, they'll come back for more. They'll leave you good reviews and that momentum, that cycle just continues over time. And another one is offering higher quality products. It's something I talk a lot about instead of offering multiple mediocre products, I like to create massive valuable listings. And when you create high quality products, when you have a higher chance of repeated customers, people see as wow, this shop really knows what they're doing. There's so much more value than I thought it would be buying this item. I'm gonna tell everyone about it, right? So same thing. These are the little tips and tricks to do to create more value, create better loyal customers and repeated customers. So number seven is the average conversion rate on Etsy is 1% to 3%. So knowing this, now you can start to compare yourself how you are in that range. So to calculate your conversion rate is you would divide your sales by your visits and you can times that by 100 to give you that actual percentage rate. But that's how you can see, do you fit with within the 1% to 3% range, are you a bit lower, are you higher, higher would be amazing, right? But if you're lower than 1%, then there are a couple of things I need to do to improve that. So number one, is your price point good? Number two, products good or your keywords relevant right so these are all things i just skimmed over that but i have a lot of videos talking about how you can increase your conversion rate so it's a good way to judge how you are compared to the average market hey everyone i hope you're doing well so i just want to take a second and talk about this standing desk over here at my studio and i've been using this for a while now flexi spot actually sent me one seeing if i want to review it test it out but i said i won't talk about it if i didn't like it but I actually end up using it. I swapped out my old desk for this and they didn't pay me to talk about it now. I'm just doing it because I actually am a fan and they have a lot of different options, a lot of variety of sizes to choose from. So if you're someone that's in the market for a standing desk, I highly recommend it. It's really good for posture. It's good to kind of stand up sometimes, which they're not always hunched like I am when I'm working away. Uh, so yeah, you know, check it out if you are looking for one. And let's go back to the video. So number eight, there's more than 50 categories on the Etsy platform. So if you think about that, that is massive. There's so many different categories on, so many different niches. For me, as someone who's been talking about Etsy, been selling on Etsy for almost a decade, I still come up upon different categories that I didn't know about. I'm still learning, researching new ideas. There's so many out there, it's impossible to understand all of them and be a specialist in all of them. And it's so interesting for me to research and see the different opportunities on this platform. And for you, it's something to think about. You don't know what you don't know. So when 
me, I don't know what I don't know. And the better you are equipped, the more knowledge you have in terms of the options available for you to execute on to start different shops and different opportunities, the better you are and the more chance of success you have, the more you'll be able to figure out, hey, you know, this idea is good. I have skill sets for this. Maybe I can tap into that. Maybe I can team up with this with someone I know that has a special skill for this. So there's a lot of different opportunities. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is that there's so many different opportunities and categories that there's something for you for sure. It's just figuring out what that is and how you can capitalize on that and to create something for yourself, create a business out of it, create a side income, a full-time income for yourself. Yeah, I thought that was super interesting for anyone that feels like they're all trying to compete in certain categories. That's not the case. There are so many different categories, opportunities out there, and it's just up to you to decide to figure that out. And I do show you the tips and tricks on how you can do that research phase, not just for my videos, but from others as well. There's a lot of resources out there that you can learn from. But yeah. <laughs> That's just me rambling on about the possibilities because I'm a true believer of this. I started someone as had a full-time job. I was an electrician and doing nine to five and I slowly learned more and more about e-commerce, about Etsy, and I was able to go down that path and create a business for myself and be able to travel the world and things like that. But now I'm trying to help other people do the same. So hopefully you found this content helpful. You learned some stats, some interesting insights, how you can elevate your shop through this and like, subscribe, comment any questions you have. Till then, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.